Recently, Adam McIntyre found himself in some drama with Ethan Klein when Ethan made the accusation that Adam had been behaving oddly around Ethan's mother, Donna Klein. Ethan made this accusation after Adam took a hit at Ethan regarding Ethan's sudden interest in his former co-host Trisha. Also, a little special mention to this little rat, Adam McIntyre. Fuck this dude, by the way. Let me play this. And I'll tell you guys why. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Got that off. Again, Ethan only misses Trisha because Trisha is incredibly popular right now and her podcast is doing great. You dumb, silly. First of all, still believe it. Still believe it. Oh, my pop. Listen, I'm not here to brag. My podcast is still way more popular. Okay? Just numbers wise, let's just say it. Okay? Dummy. You're the one that called Trisha a, sa a spawn from Satan. If you want to talk about who's writing Trisha because she's popular, look in the. So ironic, by the way, because even me and Trisha have talked about the Spawn of Satan thing being about the pop crave tweet of Queen Elizabeth reincarnation as an Irish person absolutely hate the monarch. Even Trisha has moved on from that, Ethan. My goodness. No, come here, you little douchebag. And by the way. But also, I thought that Ethan said that his issue was with Moses, so why is he getting so angry over Trisha? This kid, I disengaged from this kid when he was creeping on my mom. <laughs> That's right. Have I said this? I don't think so. This little weird- But what does Ethan mean disengaging from me? Because that's not- That, like, factually is not true. Like, that is not true. Since- Because he's saying from 2021 was whenever I, you know, first had been reached out to- Been reached out to by Ethan's mother, Donna. Um, so what he's saying there isn't true because there has been time since 2021 to 2024. But I guess that wouldn't be- Interesting. We're going to get to everything, though. Weirdo was chatting up my mom privately, one-on-one, -on -one, trying to become her best friend. They were chatting, calling, texting, and, and then when he come into L.A., he was going to meet up with her one-on-one, -on -one, and I didn't know anything about this. And then when my mom told me, I was like, that's weird as So this little freak was trying to weasel his way into a friendship with my mom. I found that very bizarre. Does Adam have a point? He just might. While Ethan initially didn't speak of Trisha because he had been asked not to by his wife Hila who was hellbent on keeping family drama offline. He does appear to be openly talking about her more now in a more positive light. And it could be because she's more popular now than she was then. After all, Ethan made it a pretty big point to call Trisha out in the spirit of holding her accountable, just to ditch the notion as if there's been no harm and no foul. It's odd to say the least. So Adam thinking that might be due to her popularity and Ethan's interest in Cloud isn't that far-fetched of a theory. Though Ethan does typically call out things that he changes his mind on pretty fast. Like when he went on a crusade to say that his brother-in-law Moses had done something unforgivable to a fan who came forward about him, only to then speak of Moses fondly some time after. Showing that Ethan's stances are fickle at best. Which is why Ethan coming at Adam with this new accusation is no surprise. And why it's incredibly obvious that Ethan is attempting to make the situation appear more sinister than it actually is. Anyone who watched Ethan's podcast families would know that it was his mother Donna who showed interest in Adam first, stating that she was a fan. And as Adam proved later in texts, it was Donna that reached out to Adam first, not the other way around. I was sent this, which is on the H3 snark, and it was basically saying that Adam befriending Donna wasn't random or creepy. He was responding to this shout out she gave him on frenemies. So this was, or family, sorry. This was even before she had messaged me. So let's, let's, let's remember what actually happened here, right? There's, I have to, I have to call out on, um, oh, wait, there's a can. guy okay, by the name of Adam McIntyre. Who's a cutie pie? He's oh, really God. sweet. <laughs> okay, I know and who he is. He's actually. not beautie pie. No, no, no. Oh no, I, I, I know mean, who Adam he is. A, he yeah. is. He's he's cute as a button. Well, let's throw a picture of uh, of him. I know who he is. Very nice young Irish lad. My mom. Yes. My I think he's adorable. Okay. First time Donna ever reached out to me was to me. She followed me and then reached out to me. It was the seventh of August, 2020, 2021. So August September. I don't know if that was before I turned eighteen. I, my birthday's the 30th of September, so I think it was, yeah, so I think this is before my 18th birthday, maybe, I don't know, um, or maybe I just turned 18, I don't know if it, 
years mask, not great for me. Um, but this is for the inevitable, oh, well, Donna's a lot older. Well, I was 18, so... And I'm not saying there's anything weird with that, but all I'm saying is, like, stop making this into this weird thing. And while Adam absolved himself, that isn't the point of this video. Though it is important to note, what this video is focusing on is Adam's relationship with Ethan's co-host, Olivia. Initially, Adam stated that he had no negative feelings toward Olivia for not standing up for him, because he believed it wasn't her responsibility to go up against her boss, and never once felt ill will about her silence. Talking about Olivia. Now, I've been seeing the weirdest, weirdest, weirdest connotations with my relationship with Olivia, right? I really like Olivia. Um, and we have had, um, a friendship over the last couple of years. And, you know, I went to your birthday party and to debunk the Reddit. I actually did get invited. I didn't just show up. Um, no, by the way, I didn't send the flyers on her birthday. That was not me. Don't know who that was. Um, and, you know, we've had this back and forth for a while now. I really like Olivia and I'm seeing that there was a lot of people, specifically in my comment section, kind of saying, why did Olivia not speak up and stuff like that? I kind of want to end that. Um, I don't, I, I appreciate people, they're coming from a good place, but it's not up to Olivia to say anything in general. And who knows, maybe she was on Ethan's side as well. Like, uh, that's what I'm saying, dude. It's like, you know, after this, like, I really do have to kind of look at my relationships with people in the YouTube sphere. I think this has been a really big wake up call. Um, but that doesn't mean that Olivia should be on stream having to defend me or having to speak up for me or, you know, speak up against her boss who, uh, <laughs> with what Ethan was, he, I mean, he was on one. Um, it's not her responsibility at all. And I know that a lot of people were kind of taking that very personally on my behalf. I just want to let you know that I don't care about that. I, I, you know, it, I don't care. Um, it's not something that I feel she has to do or had to do. Um, so I do just kind of, if you see comments like that, like, don't feel that you have to defend me. Don't feel that you have to go against Olivia. It's not deep in my eyes like that at all. Keep in mind that she is still an employee of Ethan, and I would hate that she would ever get in trouble for having to defend me. And, um, you know, we have had, um, a relationship over whatever time period it has, and I have nothing bad to say about her. However, that quickly seemed to change when Adam uploaded another video stating that he actually was annoyed by Olivia's silence. Stating he understood why people were annoyed with Olivia, because he was too. Even though he initially stated that he didn't understand why people felt that way because he himself didn't, absolving Olivia of any and all guilt. And by the way, I, I know that people keep bringing up Olivia. I have no problems with Olivia, and she has also reached out to me, and we've had a very, very, very brief conversation. Um, I believe that Olivia was put in an awkward position, position. Are me and Olivia friends? Yeah. And is it her responsibility to speak up when her boss is going f haywire against one of her friends? Not really, because that's her boss at the end of the day. Was it frustrating and annoying for me to watch? Her not saying anything? Absolutely. Do I understand why she didn't say anything? Absolutely. It's not her fault of what Ethan says. I understand the frustration that people feel. Don't worry, I felt it too. And it's completely valid if Adam did feel a sense of betrayal by Olivia's silence, but it's odd that he behaved as if he hadn't even thought about it and identified her as an innocent party, only to then turn around and explain that he felt frustration over it. So much so that he now says it made him question friendships he has, and has decided that he needs to step back from some because of this kind of behavior from Olivia. I understand the frustration that people feel. Don't worry, I felt it too. Which is a big reason that, you know, I've been very open about the fact that I'm like, oh, I need to pull back on a lot of these fucking friendships and stuff. So how does Olivia go from innocent fawn in the woods who he didn't even consider during his beef with Ethan, to someone now at the forefront of his mind causing him to re-evaluate friendships? Did he expect her to fight her boss for him or not? And what do you think? Do you think Olivia had the obligation as a friend to speak up, or did she have no choice but to sit back? The Ethan Klein and Adam McIntyre feud is still persisting, so only time will tell where Olivia really stands.